is for this great conference here. So today I'm gonna be talking about a little bit more uh, about horse. So horse is very popular in, in Mongolia still today. So, but uh, the, this kind of research still uh, recent, uh, you know, it was non the unclear for our origination of the, our uh, popular horse in Mongolia. So, uh, uh, the domestication of horses brought huge changes uh, to both of the life and mind of the ancient nomads living in the eastern steppes in the territory of modern Mongolia. Transportation by horse prompted major changes to the economy and political dynamics of ancient people, stimulating movement of the movement and territorial ex expansion of the powerful nomadic tribes across the Eurasian interior. And ultimately, uh, across the world, archaeological research over recent decades suggests that horse were the harnessed and milked in milked people of the Batai culture in northern Kazakhstan. Among the earliest direct evidence for the domestication, however, the question of when and how the first domesticated horses reached in Mongolia, how they were used, has remained subject to academic speculation due to the lack of the evidence and research until recent years. So their stone project, this is joint Mongolian uh, American uh, archaeological expedition uh, started to work in Mongolia 2002 until 2012. So the result of the, this project was uh, in, we worked in Northern Mongolia in uh, Central and Western Mongolia uh, more than decades. So, and we look for some Bronze Age, uh, late Bronze Age uh, monuments uh, is known deer stone and hirksures and so which is big stone steely monument, uh, you know, they carved on the surface is carved the uh, many deer and some uh, tools and weaponry and belt and and some also the uh, the headdress uh, equipment for the person. So, and during the, this time period we excavated uh, uh, total 36 uh, horse mounts, uh, ritual mounts uh, near the uh, uh, 23 different, uh, uh, more than 10 sites in Northern Mongolia, uh, more, a little bit more sites in Central and Western Mongolia. So, the, what is the horse mound? So, horse mound is uh, uh, the small uh, stone mound near, uh, the, near the deer stone and hirsute sites. You can see uh, this is small. Small mounds are the each each one is ke keeping the you know the buried in one horse head in it. So, the one deer stone uh, site, the, you know, the medium size of the deer stone has maybe a couple of. You know, the dozens of the horse head mound around, some of them very few, some of them very large. So this is medium sized deer stone site. So when you excavate in these horse mounds and you can find then uh, horse head and hoofs and also the neck bones and, and face it to the eastern sunrise direction. Also, also, Hirksur is also a burial mound, uh, and this is, you know, the thousands of them in, and distributed in uh, Mongolian Hanga Mountain, Central Hanga Mountain region, region, and also the Altai in Western Mongolia. Also, in the late studies of the, the recent studies of the, the Hirksur distribution is, it's also went far east in Hyangan Mountain, so it's, it's very large, you know, the distribution took a place in this kind of uh, monuments. So you can see also the horse mounts near the, this Herxur mounts. And so according to this ritual mounts and distribution of the, this two, cult, two uh, the archaeological monuments, you know, the hills at this exactly same time and same period, same people did it in uh, more than, uh, uh, more than 3,000 years ago. There's sometimes, uh, Sometimes, you know, the deer stones in Hanga Mountain areas, the sometimes deer stone hirsures are mostly, they, they took a place separately, each other. So, some place in Western Mongolia, Northern Mongolia, sometimes deer stone exactly directed in the center of the, you know, the, this uh, big mound, and also sometimes inside of the, this enclosure, 
sometimes it was in circle and sometimes square. So this is this uh, photo shows you know the horsehead mound excavation. It's very shallow, not too deep. And when you dis uh, they uncover the few top stones, you can see the horse mounds and bones and neck bones and also the four hooves and then. The uh, atlas bone of neck bone is not separated from the skull. It's usually they put them in together with head and then and between the atlas and the second word where they make us made the separate and put it in one side of the horse head mounds. So this is huge, most of the largest bronze sites in central Mongolia and Hanuali and, and this one single uh, Hirksur has more than 1,700 horse mounds, you know, just buried under the, this single, single mound. This is also, there are more like these huge mounds in that area. This is one of them. It's counted like 1,700 horse mounds, only one Hirksur. That means it's, you know, that during the Bronze Age time, this is also their stone site. We uh, worked in, uh, worked between 2009 and 2000. 11 under the grant, uh, the, the embassy preservation grant, and we restored this site and re-erect many their stone and also map it, and then did some research on them, and more than 24 their stone erected again and restored, and then we did small, also the catalog book for the, our project result. And that time, Mr. John Edelton was the, the embassy in Mongolia. It was very nice to, you know, meet again here. And also there are uh, 24 there are stones erected in the middle of these structures. And so you can see these this small dots, also the horse mounds, thousands of them, and buried in only single there stone site in huge. This is this is largest sites in Mongolia. So uh, uh, these horse mounds are uh, not only the important uh, evidence from the dating of the dirt stones and also uh, the ritual activities of the ancient people, but also it's way early the evidence of the domestication of horses in Mongolia. Still, we didn't find any horse, horse heads or domesticated horse bones earlier than this period. So uh, recent uh, uh, years, we did the small, uh, some research on the horse skulls. And we observed five uh, cranial morphological changes on the, this, this horse heads. Though first there's bit wear on the second premolar of the, the horse teeth, and also the nucleosification on the back side of the skull, and grew along the dorsal medial border of the incisive bone, we can call later in medial group. In addition, lateral groove next to the medial groove is also the another groove next to the, that medial groove on the, along the, that dorsal area. An additional groove for the nasal bones, uh, it's like originated by the, the nose band of the horse saw. We compared the, this uh, uh, new classification uh, remains or uh, trace on the horse's skull compared with the, riding, the modern riding horses and uh, also the driving horses, which is the horse used for the chariots, and so the feral horses from zoo. And so it tells us that clearly their stone Hirksur, their stone Hirksur mount, the horse heads was used for the riding and driving both. It's, you know, the very clear traces we can find. And also the, that uh, changes on the, the cranial skull bone, you can see this is very clear the grooves on the, this part of the horse bone, and also the nose band. This is the trace of the nose band of the psali, or the harness of the uh, horse heads. And uh, compared with also the, the other uh, zoo Pejewalski horses and wild horses, and so it's also clearly, it's, you know, that tells us this is uh, uh, also domesticated and used for the drawing and, the, and riding boat. So this horse mound is uh, rather carbon dated more, almost 3,000 years ago. We excavated in Northern Mongolia and Tsagan also in Hutskul province. So another uh, material evidence of the horse is uh, the horses uh, carried on the deer stones. Uh, 
The Durstone has not only deer image, but also there are hundreds of the horses in it. So it's the, the second largest number of the animal carried on the Durstone is horse. And we counted now more than maybe 239 horse images found from the Durstone from the 89 their single their stones and uh, many, some of them has maybe more than 20 horses on it. According to my hypothesis, so uh, it's the late Bronze Age, maybe late period of the their stone people, as you know, that they started to respect the horse, then uh, the deer god, because the when ho the after the horse domesticated in early people in Bronze Age people, and they started to respect and quickly in the horses. And that's why in the horse took a place on the dirt stones between the deer and first and gradually it's changed everything in, in the mind and also the art of the ancient people in late Bronze Age. And you can see the nice carving. First they took in one small place and sometimes the late period of the dirt stone has the covered by the horse image. So this is the clearly also uh, shows us it's, you know, the, the respect of the Horses was, uh, you know, the more popular in late Bronze Age time in Mongolia. And another material, uh, the archaeological evidence for the horse domestication is the rock art. The rock art is very rich in Mongolia. We have thousands of them in the uh, Altai mountain area and Hanga mountain range. Most of the rocky hills, you know, they got, you know, the hundreds of them. But this, uh, this rock art is the very distinguished rock arts from the Western Mongolia. And also 2012, we worked on this three hills named the Belut Hill, but the old name was the Darun Turuni Hoss Hill. This is uh, recently the Kazakh people uh, changed the name of this place. <laughs> so then the now pe people her call, Kazakh people called in Hergat Mountain, but it was the ancient name was the <laughs> Darun Turuni Hoss, Hoss Hills or Hoss Ma the Hostalra. And so the, there are the largest horse riders carried on the, one of the, this, this middle hill has this area, it's there huge, large, you know, the horse riders carved in one nice panel, the rock panel. So it's, maybe this is the largest horse riders in Mongolian rock art sites. So this guy has, you know, that clearly uh, the Paziric people, I thought, you know, that because of the image of the horses and tail and then also uh, the main of the main style of the, that horses are clearly shows like this Paziric horses, you can see tail and mane has that that small, you know, the the zigzag image on the this uh, Paziric horse uh, carved on the, you know, the this uh, this art and and so the head of the, this rider is very interesting, also like like a horn horn head, and then they don't have, you know, the stirrup. Some of them don't, doesn't have a stirrup, but on the single horse has, you know, the, it's like the circular image under the, the, that horse bill, it's like a, ho a horse stirrup. But I'm, I'm not sure, it's maybe later edition or the same time period of the horse, because the stirrup is, you know, the still in uh, 4th century, 8th century, uh, the 5th century AD, it's still, you know, the unclear from the archaeological excavation. Maybe it was maybe organic stirrup and then maybe disappeared or eroded in the archaeological, uh, you know, the time period. So uh, the earliest, the saddle from the early Namats in the Eurasian uh, territories, the earliest saddle uh, discovered from the Pazir graves in the uh, Gorni Alta, the Mantin Alta. And so this Pazir, uh, the important thing of the, this uh, Pazir graves has, you know, that they preserved everything. It's like, uh, like, you know, the organic materials are preserved very well because it's, the condition of the, uh, the uh, climate condition of this uh, territory is very uh, cold, you know, it's like uh, icy mountains, so it's preserved everything like organically. Then that's why this organic materials preserved very well. This is an archeological, in, in the world, you know, it's the earliest horse saddles in, in, until today. So dated 500 to 300 BC. And then later, Shunnu period, this is the Shunnu Empire of the, our, uh, you know, the ancestor. Then uh, still, you know, we, the, we, the, we didn't know about the, the Shunnu people had a stirrup or saddle or uh, from the, the archaeological excavation. But the recent studies tells us this, 
they were using saddle and so the uh, the horse ride the saddle the kind of saddle this is the one uh, engraving horse with the saddle on the bone objects from the excavation of the Shunugra from the Western Mongolia. This is the, it's very uh, interesting object from the Maynola. It's excavated in 1924, Russian scholars Kozlo in the number six mound, the Shunyu royal tomb has these two things and many people argue this is saddle part or another, you know, the object for another purpose. But we today uh, we agree that you know like uh, the the Shunyu, this this was the maybe pommel of the wooden pommels of the maybe pezir, kind of pezirik saddle in the Shunyu people. And the next uh, the complete and early saddle uh, horse saddle in uh, recently discovered in uh, Western Mongolia. Unfortunately, this site was you know diluted for the the black archaeologists in uh, two years ago. Then. Uh, some locals, you know, they called to the, our museum and we went to it there and then we're interesting cave on the mountain and destroyed and looted everything on the ground. And then some of them, some of these materials is, you know, they like captured for the, uh, the local policemen. And so they were uh, keeping those things. The one of the interesting thing was the, the, the saddle. And so this saddle is after restoration, a uh, little bit of restoration, this was very strange, you know, the very early uh, type of saddle. We can see from the, uh, the horse statues from the northern, Mongo northern China and several different, you know, the several different, just the, the ceramic statues show this kind of horse saddles. But the, the first complete wooden saddle found from in Mongolia from this side, this, this side dated, rather carbon dated like 200, for uh, 43 to 357 AD. That's mean the fourth century saddle in recently discovered in Mongolia. This saddle, we didn't find any uh, stirrups from the, this site because there are some, some you know, the leather, leather pattern just here and you know, the like exactly modern uh, stirrup uh, leather part, you know, the, but the looters said there was no uh, stirrup. And so the policemen said also they didn't find any uh, stirrups from that. Then most of them, we, you know, they took them then. But, you know, they still be unclear. Maybe it was maybe organic wooden or some other p kind of the stirrups, maybe hanging from this leather or it's or another purpose. We don't know. But it's maybe there was no maybe stirrups, I guess. So this is the northern China, China evidences of the horse riding because the saddle from Anyan, and this is the, one of the early saddle with the stirrup, but it's single stirrup on it. So first, there were, the nomads use only the single stirrup for you know the riding horses from the one side, and so they didn't use you know the the pair of the stirrups in the first then. Then later, many uh, statues also the carved in. Uh, uh, fourth century in Mongolia, and also there are very interesting uh, the textile stirrups, stirrups, and so this is one of the statue also the in the North Wadian as in uh, an ancient nomads place, and so this is the recent uh, textile stirrups in the the Bainulgi Province Museum. It's 1920 century. It's like it's maybe the this textile, the stirrups tradition, it's, you know, that took place long time and uh, until recent days. There is another rock art in uh, that, um, the Rocky Hill we worked in, there is the single stirrups, and so hanging from this uh, horseman, and so they, he, he didn't use the stirrup for riding, you know, the, for like uh, the mounting or going, it's just two, uh, two legs, it's like hanging down, and and then stirrup is the not using for you know the going or mounting on the horses. It's like the evidence of the single stirrup, the time period of the early nomads. According to our understand, you know the the early nomads uh, started to use the organic uh, stirrups like uh, leather or wood or something. In the early most of the early archaeological evidence shows that. The first stirrups was made by wood and then covered by metal, like uh, bronze or some silver objects. So, and then later they developed in uh, 
In Mongolia, our archaeological evidence says, you know, the earliest uh, the metal stirrups show they started to show on the Turkic time period, Turk time period, sixth century AD, and then later it was very popular in the Mongolian territory. So uh, one of the idea I want to sh uh, tell you today because. The Deristone Hirsur people was, I think, it's the main key of the understanding about the early horse riding, riding in uh, not only Mongolia and across the Eurasia. This is the distribution of the Deristone sites in Mongolia. Today we recorded more than 3,300 Deristones stones in Mongolia, and uh, maybe 20 of them, more than 20 of them, in Black Sea and Caucas Caucasian mountains. So these two. Uh, distribution it tells us very interesting history of the 8th century BC. So, if you travel in, across the Hanga mountain area in Mongolian territory, you can see many dead stones reused for the slave grave, destroyed, you know, they reused like uh, the construction material or grave material, like the slave grave people. You can see the Eastern Mongolia, Hinti Amak, this, this site used, you know, that more than 10. 10 dairy stones for the slave grave. In Central Mongolia, there are more than you know, the hundreds of them. In, in most Western uh, trace of the, this destroying or pushment of the slave grave people and destroy their stone, reuse them in for the slave grave. This history tells us 8th century, the, uh, the slave grave people push it to the dairy stone people to the west, west Altetum, Alte mountain or more, more west. And so, According to this observation, and so one part of the population of the Stone Hirsur people, they passed, you know, they went to the uh, the Alte mountain, and and then some of them also moved to the Black Sea area. The most of the archaeological, the more Russian archaeologists agreed, and, you know, these people came from the more deep Asian roots, and also they came came with horse horse mounted horses, and also they was very powerful tribe people and so this exactly 8th century and so you can see this their stones it's like reused for the slave grave and buried under the surface this is in Jarlantina in central Mongolia this is by in Hungary in west central Mongolia and interesting evidence horse horse evidence was one of the this horse has the this three horse uh, bronze cheek pieces connected by lead, leather beads. So that means that time period they were using the leather bead, organic bead, and then the bronze cheek pieces for the horse riding. And so this dated in a comparative analysis by 1990s, by uh, 8th century. Later we are at the carbon dated some of the disc bones and like exactly 8th, 8th century BC. Then another, another recent excavation we made in Bainhongar province, and also the another two slab graves, they use their stones for the, you know, for the grave, and then we excavated them. Also, we found many of the this, uh, horse skulls and sheep skulls, you know, the dozens of them, and you know, they sacrificed here. And then we dated them like also eighth century. It means eighth century was the most important, you know, the time period of the early nomads. So. The, the slab grave people then took a power and then they pushed it some case in you know the West Deerstone Hirsur people until Tungal River in Western Mongolia. And then that time period, interestingly, Greek Iskifian culture appeared in the other side of the Alta Mountain, an Arjan Mound. Arjan Mound is the big, huge mound. And also, this was, uh, ex you know, the old excavation, the schoolers said this is the roy royal tomb of the early Namads. And so, interesting thing was there is the horse mounds in, next to the Arjan graves. Exactly the same with the Deir Stone, Hirsur okay. horse mounds. And this tradition, I, I hope this tradition came with the Deir Stone, Hirsur people to the other side of the mountain, the Alta mountain. So, that means the, the roots of the Scythian culture is, you know, come with came with that people who, you know, they removed to the other side of Alte Mountain. They, they maybe participated or created or influenced or this Skiffian, early Skiffian culture. You can see many uh, similar objects on the Deir Stone and the Arjan 
Kurgan and Arjan Kurgan objects and also this is Central Mongolian, Jarolintinam, Slab Grave, cheek pieces. And so Arjan Mound has the, exactly, they have, you know, the, the uh, metal bits discovered. And also the dirt stone discovered from the Arjan Mound. That means exactly the Arjan Mound, you know, that they are, they exactly, you know, they continue the their stone Hirsur people tradition in that, that side of the mount, other side of the mount, of the mountain. So many burials, we can see the exactly same objects carved on the dirt stones, that this shield, this wooden shield, this, this you know, the carved on the dirt stones and found from the Scythian graves. And this, this uh, earring is also, the, this kind of earring is, this is the dirt stone earring. This is all the archaeological earrings from the, the Toa and the Scythian, uh, the cluster, uh, archaeological cluster. So these knives and weaponry, all the similar objects is found in the Scythian uh, the culture. So that means it clearly tell, tells us, you know, this is the, the influence or the participation was very important in the early Scythian culture with the dirt stone Kirksur people in, in the Western Alta mountain area. And uh, also this, uh, the, Pazirik, uh, the very famous Fazirik tattoos are very popular in the world. And also, I think it's many people, uh, the Russian scholars said maybe they, they usually in the, uh, before the, twin, the most 20th century scholars said, you know, the their stone Hirkshire people is the later version of the Scythian culture, not the early, not free culture. So in our dates, in our, all the other carbon dates of the horse mount said, it's the 500 year early then Scythian, earliest Scythian culture rooted in Mongolia. And the, that animal style art also and already originated in Mongolia on the dear stone. And so this is maybe later, uh, later version of the maybe dear stone carving because they like uh, made very easy, you know, the like uh, easier or they were more, how do you say, helpful with each other. Simple, yeah, very simple, you know, that they, they changed it very simple, all ideas on the, on the culture, because they made small wooden uh, representation of the real things into the object, the grave, and also they made maybe, I don't know, I never find, you know, that these statues, it's like, they made like, you know, the, on the alive person, or after died, maybe they made this, or I don't know, because maybe, maybe I think this is maybe, they made this after died, because maybe they carried this everything, the symbolic animals took the soul of the dead person to another world. You know, the curtain they might study deer stone deers and all animals like symbolic of the like the transportation animal to the you know the human soul to the next life and next world. So that means it's maybe this carving also exactly the same idea of the deer stone people. And interesting other evidence is the, the deer antler mask is, you know, the wear on the horses of the Pazirik people. That means it's still they continuing to respect deer, but horse was more important than deer. Still, this is mixed, you know, the understanding or respecting of the symbolic animals. But this is maybe the, uh, exactly uh, the maybe the switching or the shipping of the idea of the ancient people. It's like deer to horse. Okay, my conclusion is like, uh, according the, to the archaeological studies, uh, not only similar structural elements, ritual activities between their stone Kirksur and early Scythian burial mounds, but also same objects contained in the images carved on Mongolian deer stones were uncovered from the most of the Scythian burials, including Arjan, Pazuric, and Saka graves. The sudden emergence of the mounted rites in the region show that there was the huge influence of the Deerstone Hirksur culture on the Scythian culture roots. We know that DNA and the ethnic composition of the Scythian culture cluster is very diverse, and the eastern part of the, uh, the its eastern part of it is closely related to the inner region nomads. The origin of the Scythian can be described as mixture of Yamna-related ancestry and also composition of the component of the East Asians in North Siberian uh, elements based on the limited genomic database. For example, most of the royal tomb of the Pazir culture and many other burial sites show the Asian roots, Asian DNA. DNA. So aforementioned archaeological and genomic facts can be used and suggest that mounted riding along 
With the artistic animal stylization and tradition came, with, came to Central Asia and Eastern Europe with Deerstone Hilkshire people, the emergence of the horse riding changed everything quickly, including the emergence of powerful social organization, art and worship itself. Although uh, we hypothesis that domestic horses reached Mongolia before the Deerstone Hilkshire pe period, uh, the additional archaeological research is necessary to understand when the animals first arrived in the Eastern Steppe. Our research shows that the ancient nomads in Mongolia played an important role in the history of horseback and riding, and not only Northeast Asia, but also Central Asia as well as Eastern Europe, and prompted the revised and understanding of material culture and cognition of the early people and living in the Eastern continental interior. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. But is watching from Florida right now, and he's asked, he asked humanity's first contact with horses was in that region, right? Where in Mongolia? In, in the first contact, uh, according to archaeological evidence or archaeological material and botai culture in northern Kazakhstan, they they have you know that the some uh, the maybe five hundred five thousand five hundred years ago, the botai culture people. Use it, use it horse and also milk them because the the mare milk was you know the 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 the, the trace of the mare the mare milk attached to the the ceramic inside of the ceramic found from the Batak culture. So it's still you know the Batak culture is still we need to study or uh, focus on more about that because the the schoolers who studied and excavated in Batak culture they said they found also the beet were on the some horses, horses colors, horse toots uh, discovered from Bata culture. So, but this is this time period is much earlier than our Deerstone Hillsur horse head. So, and but the early Bronze Age and so you know more early period is very very quiet with horse head and horse uh, trace in Mongolia. Yeah, horse domestication practice. Yeah. Uh, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about um, a genetic uh, investigation of horses. Um, uh, to what extent is ancient DNA <coughs> extracted from these horse remains, and uh, what, if, the, what, if anything, is this ancient DNA telling us about the affiliations of Mongolian horses? And I want specifically ask: Is there any, um, is there any trace of, for example, tech? These kind of wild horses in the genome of ancient DNA horses or is modern Mongolian horses? As you know, the modern uh, studies of the, the Tech and Perjewalski horse and the modern horses, the different, you know, the species, uh, because their, their chromosome, uh, chromosome is the, uh, different in two numbers. One has 44, one has, I think, 46 or it's the uh, according to my uh, I think understand it, it's like it can't be originate the Mongolian modern horse from the Perjewalski horse. So that means it's not our Mongolian horses originated from the Perjewalski horse. It's uh, most of the scholars agree that the ancient uh, uh, the ancestor of the Mongolian horse was the maybe the Eurasian uh, wild horse named Tarpan. You know this is Turkic language. Uh, uh, the name for the wild horse. So that means, you know, the, our horses, but the Deerstone Hirksur horse, this, is, this horse DNA is still, you know, we did, couldn't do in uh, the digital DNA analysis, but we already sent our the samples to the one of the uh, biggest project who is looking for some DNA traces of the ancient horses in, across the Eurasia. So I hope we can, we can, we can see the result of this uh, traces soon, yeah. Thank you. I'm 
The question, uh, the, he has uh, two questions. The first question about this uh, usage of the single stirrup or the, cu uh, the, the couple of stirrups. So it's the, when is the difference uh, the, with, uh, uh, the using, when they started to use, uh, what time they were the, they were using on only the one the single uh, the stirrup. The second question about the protection of this uh, archaeological and the cultural uh, evidence is uh, the materials. Uh, so what kind of uh, measurement is taken from uh, Mongolian government is uh, very unfortunate when he heard that about this. Uh, the I think, you know, uh, the first century AD is the most of North northern Chinese border area and also the hour that uh, uh, the rock arts, maybe it's like First, you know, the, the, stirrup, the duty of the stirrup was just for mounting horses for, you know, that's like for, just like that purpose they made. And then later they, uh, maybe they understood, you know, the two pair of the, the stirrup, it's, you know, the, also it's, you know, the easier to and so riding horse in, you know, galloping horses in long time, you know, the long ride. So. It's uh, we uh, the earliest evidence in the fourth century AD. We can find uh, any other like pair of the stirrups earlier than that period. So I think it's that stirrups appeared like fourth century AD in, in Eurasia and between in our our country and northern China. It's you know the even today is Chinese uh, territory, but it's ancient nomads territory in early time that time period. Yeah. The second question, yeah, the, the preservation and protection of the Mongolian cultural heritage, it's very uh, sensitive in, during the, this time because, and uh, it was very, uh, uh, very calm within during the Soviet time in, with Russians, you know, the, after 1990s, you know, the, our society and uh, the Mongolian, uh, uh, the people's, uh, economic situation and also the mental situation is the uh, little bit changed like uh, I say it's like more free or more flexible and then the recent uh, observation of the Mongolian cultural heritage is you know destroyed damaged by the physical function in Mongolia a lot it's um, when I work in the summertime in Mongolia and Northern Mongolia and Western Mongolia, we can see everywhere destroyed looted mounds and destroyed archaeological sites everywhere. And so that means it's we, we need to attention these things in Mongolian government very soon. Otherwise, this is already destroyed and looted and then we didn't keep anything from the ancient times. So today, you know, we, Still, we couldn't build new museums, new storage, new facilities for Mongolian cultural heritage in our government. So it's one of the, the key understanding, key uh, uh, cultural thing to, you know, the do first. So that means it's, I can say it's, you know, the government is not focused on these things today. Um, are there other, are there other animals that are really prominent in the iconography of Hazard? Can others say it's like the ibex and different carnivores, um, the eagle griffin? Do, do you see some, uh, any of those on the deer stones or any sort of indication of how those animals became important in the cosmology? Yeah, uh, the, the other, most of the animal arts, you know, the animal art, the arts with animal images, it's like ibex and that panthers and sure, the Curled animals, it's most of them in uh, carved on the deer stone, deer stone art. But the uh, only thing is griffin is almost we, can, we can't see on the deer stone art. But otherwise, other animals is really, really, really similar with the skiffin art and deer stone art in Mongolia. 
about the development of mounted archery and uh, what, what impact that had on the saddle and the gear. Yeah. It was, you know, the uh, mounted archery was, uh, you can see from the uh, the rock art in Mongolia, it's there are hundreds of the, you know, the mounted arch uh, archers. But uh, archaeological evidence, we never, uh, you know, there are also the bow, the bow and arrow also carved on the deer stones. But uh, Bronze Age time, we can't, we can't, Tell exactly, you know, that they were using that mounted archery or not, because it's rock art is the non, you know, the stable uh, fact for you know the tale and dates for the archaeological remains or archaeological time period. So we can say just general Bronze Age time, maybe the late Bronze Age time after they arrived, and it's clearly you know it's how they uh, even they can archer, uh, you know, they like shoot a bow and arrow without the stirrup, of course, but and later, you know, that they got the pair of the stirrup there was more powerful, I think, yeah. Technique uh, because, uh, 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 Mr. Bator is asking uh, about uh, his readings around early. He read uh, the one uh, uh, article in a uh, uh, journal called uh, Courier, was from uh, the published from UNESCO, and in that article it was said that uh, the first ever stirrups were found in northern China. Uh, in the 3rd century BC, BC 3rd century. So is it this uh, uh, evidence is still, the, still in, the, in the fact that uh, anything before that was found uh, after that period? Or, and then in this uh, article, it also said that uh, uh, those uh, North, Northern China's uh, metal stirrup uh, is originated, uh, they did it, made it after they, were, they learned it from, uh, not really said Mongolians, but uh, the uh, nomads from nomads. And another interesting thing that he read was that when Attila, the uh, Hans leader Attila, when, when they uh, uh, fight in, against the Romans, the uh, key was the stirrups, because the Romans didn't have a stirrup. So what uh, is it, all these are the true fact or not? OK. Thank you for question. So uh, uh, according to the archaeological uh, materials, we never find any metal stirrups from the Shunu graves in Mongolia still today. So uh, that maybe that time was maybe third century AD was maybe, if not the third century BC. That means you know that, that all the the ceramic statues and so that Anian saddles uh, tells us like fourth century AD. And that 
I, I didn't see any more earlier uh, readings from the stirrups before common era. So, uh, it, the, yeah, in Mongolia, it's like first the stirrups discovered from the Turkic burials, like 6th century AD, earliest horse stirrups. In, Yeah, it's, it's Thank you. Thank you very much. This is very interesting.